Hello my front porch art friends and welcome back. We are going to be doing our crayon resist spider web. So excited about this project. We are going to pull out everything you got in your kit. You have a piece of watercolor paper, a black crayon, a fun watercolor set, and some things you need to add are a little bowl of water. Make sure you're working on a surface you can get wet. And I like to have a paper towel or rag next to me to wipe my brush on. Okay, let's get started. We're going to be making this fun watercolor spider web. All right, if you look at your instructions, it says draw a corner from a corner four lines. Okay, well, first I think I'm just going to draw a little kind of little circle in my corner like that, like a half circle. Gives me something to draw from. And then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four. Almost like I'm drawing a sun. See that? Okay. Now, the next step is to draw the inside of your spider web. And that's just, and you can make this as many lines as you want. You can make a lot of lines really close together. If you think about a spider web, when you see one, the lines are really intricate. They're very close together and there's a lot of them. Or you can make them farther apart depending on what you want your spider web to look at. But you're drawing a little curved line like this between each line that you already drew. See that? And you're gonna do that all the way that down to the bottom of where the lines end. So something like this. Look at, isn't that starting to already look like a spider web? Okay, I think I'm gonna stop there for now. And also, you know how sometimes spiders are in the web or dangling from it. I'm gonna draw kind of a little squiggly line that my spider will be dangling from. You can do that if you'd like, or you can put your spider when we're done right in the web. You can also keep going and make the web bigger. Up to you guys, okay? So I've got my crayon down. Remember to do all the crayon first though, because once you wet this, you won't be able to go back and add crayon. That'll make it a little harder. So I think I'm done here. I'm gonna put my crayon down and I'm gonna get my paintbrush that came in my kit. Open that up, open my paints up. And I've got my bowl of water. And the first thing I like to do, it's called wet on wet when you're watercoloring, and that is I'm gonna take just some plain water and I'm gonna kind of gently just wash, I call it, wash my paper. I don't have any paint yet, I'm just washing it with the water. I'm not soaking it and putting a lot on. I'm going just kind of a, a light coat of water. I think I'll stop here. I'll just do the web portion for now. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and you guys use whatever colors you would like. I'm gonna start with some purple. And I'm gonna go right over. I just put that water. And you see how light it is? That's because there's already water there. If you put paint on paper that hasn't been wet, I'll show you what I mean. It's a lot darker. See that? 
So, but we're, today we're just gonna start out with a wash, I call it. We're gonna start out light and we're gonna build up our darks. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use the red too. Put some red in there. Now paint is a lot like other things. When you mix it too much, and you've probably done this in school or at home, it can get kind of a muddy look. So try not to mix your colors up too much. Try to put them in their own spot. And what I also like to do is once I wash my brush, I kind of like to wipe it with a paper towel to clean that color off. And I think I'll do a little blue. Okay, now I think I didn't wash, wet the bottom part yet, so we can go ahead and do that. Just go ahead and wet, lightly wash the bottom of your paper. If your paper starts to curl up a little bit like mine is, that's okay. I think yours might be a little thicker and may not do that. It's okay, it'll dry flat, so don't really worry about that so much. All right. Got the rest covered and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some green. I'm gonna kind of do a green down here. Okay. Show you that. Got a nice wash, it's called of color. I've got a little water on there and I went in and I lightly put some paint on and I have a nice color wash. Now what I'd like to do now is go in and darken some of these areas. So I'm going to take my brush and just get some, I'm not going to go over the whole thing again with water, it's already wet. So I'm just going to get some paint and I'm going to go back in do in, on top of some of these areas. And see what I'm doing? I'm adding more color and it looks darker. I might even dry my brush off a little bit between. I'm gonna go get the red. Put some more darker red on there. Go back and get that blue. See that? See how it's getting darker? What I love about watercolor is this, you never know what it's going to look like. The way the water dries, see that? It's kind of a nice white and green and that's just the way the water and the paint dried together. So go back in and maybe I'll just make it darker on this one side. And just have fun with this. Kind of experiment with the watercolor paints. I think blue and green look nice when they're mixed together. They make like an aqua. Okay, I think I like mine. When you're happy with where it is, see that? Then you can stop and let it dry a little. Um, what I love too about working with crayon and watercolors and why it's called a resist watercolor painting is you're not painting over the black crayon so it really shows through. The water resists the crayon. The wax in the crayon is of a substance that doesn't accept the water so it's a nice thing to use when you want the black to show through. And I'm going to let this dry and while you're letting it dry you could read all about spiders that came with this kit and why they spin webs. And I know one of the main reasons is what? Have you read it? Is to catch their food. And I think now when you go look at a spider web outside, look and see if there's any food the spider has caught. And they definitely eat insects. So maybe you saw a bug or something in a spider web. So once it's dry, you can take the little spider that came in your kit and a little glue and put them right there dangling down on the spider web or put them somewhere else in the spider web. 
I hope you enjoyed this and we'd love to see your spider webs if you want to post them on or get mom or dad to help you post them on Instagram or Facebook. Enjoy it and next time you're outside, look for a spider web.